The debate for who is the best player in the NBA right now in 2021 is as interesting as it's been in a very long time. LeBron has pretty much consistently been the best player in the league for a long time now, pretty much the last decade, but right now with his a little bit of a decline, it's a very interesting debate right now. You could make a very strong case for Giannis after his elite finals performance. You could certainly make a case for Kevin Durant. I personally could even make a case for Kawhi Leonard, and obviously LeBron still exists. You still can make a case for him to be the best player in the league. But personally, I think the best player in the league is Steph Curry. And honestly, I think most people should think this as well. But this is my personal opinion, and I think that Steph Curry is the best player in the NBA right now. And there's a lot of things getting in the way that people might say that he's not, specifically saying that he didn't make the playoffs this year, so how can he be the best player in the league? But in today's video, I'm going to be going in depth and showing you guys why I think Steph is the best in the NBA right now. So let's get straight into it. So let me start off by talking about Steph Curry's scoring ability and just how insane it was this year specifically. We know that Steph has always been one of the best scorers in the NBA. Currently, I think he's at least the second best scorer in the league, maybe behind Kevin Durant. And he showed this year that he's easily still the best shooter in the league as he's been for a long time now. And we know that if you give Steph any type of separation, even one inch of separation, he can easily knock down a three right over your head. And his scoring specifically this year was simply insane and very fun to watch. He could score very effectively in all three levels. And like I mentioned, is still easily the best three-point shooter. This year specifically, he led the league in points per game with 32 points per game, second in points per 75, only behind Joel Embiid there, and he did this on very strong efficiency too. One of his most efficient years of his entire career so far, shooting a 58% field goal percentage, 65.5 true shooting, which is about 8%, 8.3% above average, 8.3 relative true shooting, which is absolutely insane. For those of you don't, that don't know, true shooting is basically a stat that measures kind of your overall efficiency and he also had a 60.5 effective field goal percentage a plus 6.7 relative effective field goal percentage which is also absolutely insane this is kind of a stat here that factors in that three pointers are worth more than two so amazing efficiency here from Steph and also a 2.1 score val which again is second in the league only behind Kevin Durant and when we look at what he's doing at each level of the game too this year shooting 66% of the rim obviously he's very crafty and efficient at the rim and this is on 4.2 attempts per game doesn't take a ton of shots in the mid-range area, but according to Backpick, still shoots about 5 mid-range attempts per game on 50% shooting from there, and this season had a career high and by far a league high of almost 13 3-point attempts per game, and still shot 42% from 3, despite all of the tough shots that he's taking. Steph was also automatic from the free throw line as usual, shooting 92% from there on around 6.5 attempts per game, and also 49.8% of his buckets were unassisted, so basically, Half of the buckets that he got, he created his own shot. So the fact that he's creating his own shot a lot of the time and still having this insane efficiency while taking a lot of tough shots as well is absolutely insane. Now let's take a look at Steph Curry's shot shot here. I mean, nothing really new here. We see how he's pretty automatic in the paint, very crafty around there when you watch him play. Has elite range. This is something that definitely has to factor in as well. His incredible range, how you have to guard him well beyond the three-point line and simply automatic from three as usual. You can see how he hits a few mid-range shots as well. Like I said, doesn't attempt a lot of shots in this area, but still automatic from there when he has those attempts. And overall, we just have to look at how Steph Curry is still easily, easily the best shooter, three-point shooter by a very large margin in the league right now, and easily a top two score in the league. You can make a very, very strong case with all of these stats and watching him play with his elite shooting ability, shot creation ability. You could easily make a case that he's the very best score in the NBA right now. Personally, I think it's very close one and two with him and KD. Second thing I want to talk about here is Steph Curry's playmaking and how he might very well be the very best playmaker in the entire league. And as fans here, we really have to understand the difference between passing and playmaking. Playmaking is a whole different game. You have to factor in lots of things. For example, gravity. When you watch Steph play, sometimes he can draw triple teams and quadruple teams at time. He has the best gravity in the league on the perimeter and absolutely insane off-ball moves movement and we see how a lot of the times he's coming of uh, coming off screens is cre and creating shots by coming off of screens and getting himself those open shots making plays that way as well and I'm going to talk about his gravity a little bit later on but when we look at some of his basic stats here these don't exactly tell the full story this season averaging almost six assists per game
game, three and a half turnovers, which results in a about 1.7 to one assist to turnover ratio, which is pretty much around average for the league right now, and an assist percentage of about 30 and a half percent, which is pretty elite. But we have to look at some other stats here and more in-depth stats to really see the true playmaking ability of Steph Curry. According to back picks, he has a 1.4 play val, which is your playmaking value estimated by the backpicks.com uh, website, and they they have him ranked 12th in the league in play val right now with a 1.4, a 14 box creation, which is an estimate of how many open shots you create for your teammates per game, and this ranks 7th in the NBA currently, and Steph also is 3rd in the NBA in secondary assists with about 1.3 per game. This is basically for you guys that watch hockey, this is basically like the hockey assist, the second assist, and I think this is a really good stat to kind of define Steph's playmaking ability because he not only just gets that primary assist, but when you get that secondary assist, Steph has a lot of these, and he also has the third best offensive box plus minus in the NBA right now. And when I talked about his gravity too, here are some pictures on the screen right now of how Steph Curry, sometimes he can draw things like triple teams when he's literally just dribbling the ball on the, on the perimeter and making a play. And this is how he gets so many secondary assists because he's do, he does this, he draws the attention, passes it to someone like Draymond for example, and Draymond ends up getting credit for the assist. So a lot of the time we really have to analyze and watch games to see the full playmaking value of Steph Curry. And an another picture here on the screen of just his elite gravity and how he can draw attention from literally four guys on the court at once. It's just absolutely insane what he can do when it comes to gravity and also his fantastic off-ball movement. And you really do have to watch the games to see Steph Curry's elite playmaking value. And with everything combined that I've talked about here, especially Steph's gravity that he brings to the court, you can make a very, very strong case that he's the very best playmaker in the league. I would put him as a lock for top three and and quite possibly number one. Now just briefly here, I wanted to talk about Steph Curry's defense. Now back in 2015 and 2016, when Steph was also at times getting conversations of being the best player in the league, a lot of people didn't have him as that, including myself, because of how his defense was slightly below average in most people's eyes. But right now, I actually think he's improved his defense, and you can see too that you could definitely make a case for a guy like Giannis, for example, who has elite defense, that his defense and the gap between him and Steph might separate him. But we have to keep in mind here how Steph Curry, at least in my opinion, is probably an above average defender, slightly above average in my eyes. I think on the perimeter, he's slightly above average. He can also hold his own in the post. I think he's a really underrated interior defender, and he's also a good off-ball defender. When we look at some stats from this season, averaging about 1.2 steals per game, which is pretty good, along with 2.1 deflections per game, and overall a defensive field goal percentage of 44.4. And this is a about a minus 2.2 relative def defensive field goal percentage, meaning that this he holds opponents to a below average field goal percentage by about 2%, which is pretty good considering that a lot of people have used Steph de Steph's defense against him in rankings like this. And I know he does defend the perimeter a lot, and a lot of these are three-point shooters, and these are obviously more missed shots, but still, Steph Curry, like I mentioned, only 50% of the shots that he defends defends are three-point shots and like I said, he is a good interior defender at times too in the post. He can hold his own there despite his size. He also holds his opponents to a slightly below average three point percentage around 36.3% from three. So I just wanted to briefly talk about this and talk about how you can't really use Steph's defense against him that much in rankings because he's probably a slightly above average defender. Last thing about Curry's game I want to talk about here is his impact. And the reason I feel the need to talk about this is because a lot of people are saying that Curry isn't the best player because his team missed the NBA playoffs. And I don't blame you for thinking this at first. I mean, it is weird to consider the, a guy as the best player in the league when his team didn't even make the playoffs and we don't even have a playoff performance to factor into his ranking here. But when we look at Curry's impact and just how impactful he was to this Warriors team, I honestly think if he doesn't even play on the team this year, they might finish last in the, in the Western Conference like they did last year. He's just that impactful of a player. And I honestly don't see any other player you could put in Curry's situation 
situation this year, swap him out and put him in his situation and have the Warriors make the playoffs. This season, Curry had a player impact estimate of 18, which is 6th in the NBA, a 26.4 player efficiency rating, which is 7th, like I mentioned, 3rd in box plus minus in the league, 7th in win shares, and a plus 8.6 on off rating. That one there really shows his impact towards his team and just how bad they are when he's off of the floor. And we also have to factor in here that the Warriors this season with Curry playing had an offensive rating of 112.6 and with him out they had a offensive rating of 104.8. That's a huge difference there as well and all of these stats in general really just show Curry's overall impact and just how impactful of a player he is. And like I said I really don't see any other player you could take in the league, put them in Curry's situation and have the Warriors make the playoffs this year. So if your argument for Curry not being the best player in the NBA is the fact that his team didn't make the playoffs, I find this very invalid. The last thing I'm going to do today is look at the players that you could argue as the best players in the league and tell you guys what separates Curry from them in my personal opinion. And again, this is all about our personal opinions and what we think about like certain gaps with the certain aspects of people's games. For example, like I said, you can make the argument that some of these guys' defense is separating them from Steph Curry with the gap there. But when we look at some comparisons here, I mean, first looking at Kevin Durant, I mean, I think pretty much scoring-wise, they're pretty much equal, if not KD, a little bit higher. Defense, I also think they're pretty much equal, if not KD, just a little bit higher. But Steph's elite playmaking separates him from KD, in my opinion. When we look at Giannis, I mean, Steph's shooting alone here should separate him from Giannis. For most of us, I think the recency bias might play into this one here and Giannis's defense. But obviously, like, free throw shooting is obviously a massive gap. Three-point shooting and the fact that Steph can just shoot at an elite level in general and Giannis can't and the scoring gap in general is pretty big here along with gravity and playmaking so offensively Steph is much better than Giannis and I think this is what separates him from Giannis for me we look at Kawhi who also has a case in my opinion but I think Steph's also playmaking and his volume scoring separates him from Kawhi and we also look at LeBron who declined a little bit in every aspect of the game this season in my opinion and I think that he's a slightly better playmaker than LeBron Steph Curry is and scoring wise I definitely think Steph Curry is much better now that LeBron James is struggling a little bit more at the rim and not as automatic of a score as his career goes forward. So this is what separates Curry from all of the other players in my opinion. So to cap off today's video, Steph Curry is still a top 2 scorer in the league, easily a top 3 playmaker in the league, an above average defender in my eyes, and is one of the most impactful players in the league and the fact that his team didn't make the playoffs shouldn't go against him at all. This combined with the comparisons that I briefly went through at the end there is why I think that Steph Curry is the best player in the NBA right now. So there you have it. That's the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching today's video. I appreciate you guys if you watched the whole video today. Be sure to comment down below your thoughts on today's video and who you think is the best player in the NBA. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my three previous videos where I went through three parts, my top 50 players in the NBA right now. So be sure to go check those out as well. Thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys next video.